when they told me I couldn't be a nurse. At first, I wanted to give up because I felt like I've done so much and I've made so many changes, not just for me, but for the betterment of the community. And um, I, I, I felt stuck um, in this house and I, I felt like um, I was meant to be in the hood, like I was meant to be on government assistance, like I was meant to be held below a certain level. And then, um, and then God said, no, you're not. You're here because I chose you to make this change. Jay Sean. Jay Sean. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Good morning. Good morning. It's time to get up. It didn't sink in that I was destroying my life until it affected my children. I think when you, when, when you go through life and you really don't value yourself to a certain uh, degree, then it's hard for you to value life. And it's not until you become responsible for somebody else's life that you really understand the true value of it. When I was um, incarcerated, I used to to dream all the time of being able to watch my kids go to school or watch them play in the backyard through the window. And, and I had told myself um, back then that if I ever reached that phase in my life, then I would truly be successful in, in all, all means of the word. So it means a lot for me to be um, an active parent and be able to watch my children go to the bus and take them to school and, and watch them play. It's, it's, a, it's a lifelong dream. We had like looked around and looked at different houses, you know. I mean, it might sound kind of dorky to somebody else, but we had looked at different houses like, oh, I think we might get that one or, you know, because we thought that we were going to be in a position due to my hard work to be able to afford um, a house or buy a home or, um, and that wasn't the case. At first, when I was, when I was uh, told that I wouldn't be able to take my nursing test, I, I didn't tell a lot of people like my classmates and uh, my younger kids. Take, my daughter knew and my mom and them knew. Um, but I was embarrassed to um, discuss it. And uh, so my kids, my boys would, would ask me for a couple weeks, you know, mom, what's up? Are we, you know? And um, I didn't have the heart to tell them that things weren't going like we had hoped. So I tried to figure out what I could do because my kids deserve so much better than to be punished because of my mistakes when I was 19 and 20. I would say my role in liking this is I support what she's doing and I support uh, her issue and her particular uh, issue. It's, it's, it's one of those things that I think that needs to be talked about and I applaud her for her effort because a lot of people would just give up. This isn't about someone who's been through Department of Corrections per se. It's about 
assisting those who do not want to be a recipient of government assistance, do not want to be living in Section 8 housing, do not want to live a same cycle over and over again, you know, who wants to be active, wants to share their story, wants to give back, wants to be a leader, wants to be a part of the community, and, and rightfully so. There's a lot of people out here that um, become discouraged because it takes too long for an opportunity to come available or they're uh, put in a position where, okay, do I still stay on the straight and narrow and pray that a job comes available or do I go out here and do what I know how to do and feed my kids? because my kids are looking at me saying, I'm hungry. I'm a firm believer that the devil is busy, but one thing the devil didn't count on is that I knew that there was something better for me. 